Hello everybody, in this video we'll talk about the 3 and 10 year unlawful presence bars. As you remember, we previously reported when this change was announced, but in this video we'll dive deep into the policy, who is affected, and everything else you need to know. So if you're interested in this topic, I'll see you on the other side. Hello everybody, and welcome back to our immigration channel. This is a place where you get the most up-to-date immigration news, immigration information, and everything else that you need to make your immigration journey less stressful. My name is Jacob Saposhnik and I'm an immigration attorney located in San Diego, California, and I help clients in all 50 states and all over the world. And in this video, I'm going to give you a full breakdown about the new USCIS policy, about the three and 10 year unlawful presence bars, and all the different scenarios that this rule could apply to. But before we do that, if you're here for the first time, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos, and also give us a big like so YouTube will be able to show this video to more people just like you. Essentially, what this new policy states is that if a non-citizen seeks admission to the United States after three or 10 years after the relevant departure, that non-citizen is not inadmissible even if that person returned to the United States during the three or 10 year statutory period. So essentially, even if that person returned to the United States during the bar period, whether it's three or 10 years, the fact that that person was inside the United States does not make him inadmissible and potentially could be eligible for adjustment of status. And I'm going to give you a few examples in the next few minutes. So make sure you watch this video all the way until the end. Again, just to explain, the previous notion was that if you're subject to the three or 10 year bar, the only way for you to be able to clear that is that you had to wait outside the United States for three or 10 years to be able to apply for a visa again, typically non-immigrant visas. But under this new policy, this is not the case anymore. This new policy also expanded the use of the 212D3, also known as the non-immigrant waiver, also giving it a broader use, and I'll give you a few examples right now. Let's say you're an undocumented student, a student that is currently not eligible for DACA, either because that student didn't come here during the right statutory period for DACA, or because they're too mature for DACA. Whatever the reason, we have currently quite a few undocumented students currently stuck in the United States, not being able to move forward with their legal status. Such undocumented students can apply under this new policy for the 212D3 waiver. This is a non-immigrant waiver once again. The waiver has a few elements, particularly showing that the person who is applying for the waiver is not a threat to the United States and they should be eligible for a visa. So if, the, if such a waiver is approved, such student can go back and apply for a non-immigrant visa without being subject to any of the three or 10 year bars. So for example, let's say you're a student in the United States, you overstayed your student visa, perhaps you left at some point and re-entered, now you're subject to the three or 10 year bar. If you apply for the 212D3 waiver, their waiver is approved, you're gonna be able to return to the United States, perhaps with a work visa like an H-1B or an O-1 visa, and that entry will give you valid non-immigrant status and you're not gonna to have to worry about the three or 10 year bar. Another example is, let's say you're an immigrant who came to the United States, overstayed their visa, then you entered to the United States, let's say legally, with another non-immigrant visa, and now you're subject to the three or 10 year bar. If you marry your citizen under this new policy, it doesn't matter that previously you were subject to the three and 10 year bars, you're now allowed to adjust your status inside the United States, and your previous overstay will not matter anymore. This non-immigrant waiver can also be applicable to other non-immigrants. So for example, let's say you lived in the United States before in a different status, you overstayed your visa, then you left, and now you wanna go back to the United States as an investor under an E2 visa or some other non-immigrant visa. Well, previously it would be very difficult for you to get that visa because the overstay is gonna be hanging above your shoulders the whole time, and typically each embassy and consulate would deny your non-immigrant visa. But now if you apply for the 212D3 waiver and get it approved, you're gonna be able to enter the United States with your E2 visa or any other non-immigrant visa, and that previous overstay is not gonna matter anymore. Under this policy, there's also gonna be a group of applicants who may not need waivers at all. So for example, let's say you live in the United States as a tourist or an H1B or as a student, and either you stopped going to school, overstayed your status, or you came here as a visitor, overstayed over the 180 days, then you left, and then you re-enter the United States in legal status. As long as that person entered back legally, now they're fighting for adjustment of status based on marriage, for example, such individuals are not gonna need any waivers and they should be able to adjust inside the United States, even if they were here during the period of the three 
or 10 year bars. So overall, this new guidance is a welcome clarification over a policy that was very confusing. Bottom line is that the three and 10 year bar continue to run irrespective if the individual returned to the United States during the period of the three and 10 year bar, which means that this is very clear that just because somebody re-entered the United States, whether lawfully or unlawfully, it didn't stop the bar from continuing to run as previously were interpreted by USCIS. And this is going to be helpful for us attorneys when we're trying to represent clients and help them navigate this complex system. So hopefully this information is helpful. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. And once again, if you need help with any of your immigration matters, text me 619-483-4549. I'm here to help you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.